Well, I enjoy telling stories. And a lot of times the stories I tell are about things that happened to me when I was a little boy. But for the next few weeks, I want to tell you stories that I heard when I was a little boy that had a great impact on my life. And one of them I heard over 65 years ago. I was only about eight years old. I was in vacation Bible school. And our teacher told us the story about Glenn Cunningham, the Miracle Miler. So I want to tell you that story. Glenn Cunningham and his family lived in uh, Kansas. And uh, oh, it gets cold in Kansas. And so he, when he was only seven years old, he and his brother Floyd, who was nine years old, were given a little job to build a fire in the schoolhouse in the great big pot-bellied stove in the middle of the, of the schoolhouse room. And so uh, they would go to school early before anybody else got there, and they would put some wood in the, in the stove and some paper. And, and then sometimes they would splash a little bit of kerosene, which is kind of like charcoal lighter fluid like your dad may use to uh, when he builds a, a, a charcoal fire to grill out. And uh, so this one morning, it was really, really cold. And so they got there before uh, anybody else, of course, and they started the fire and they reached to get some kerosene, but someone had replaced the kerosene with gasoline. Now, you know what happens when gasoline ignites. As soon as uh, Frank splashed the gasoline on the stove, that had a little tiny spark already burning, there was just a huge explosion. And both boys were immediately, they just became uh, lit human torches. And they ran out of the schoolhouse, and of course, they didn't stop, drop, and roll, which is what you're supposed to do when you get on fire, but they ran out into the yard, and a, a, a farmer was passing by, and he saw these two fireballs come uh, running out of the schoolhouse, and he jumped off of his wagon, he ran, and he grabbed Glenn, who was the closest to him, and put him down in the snow, and got him, uh, kind of got the fire put out, and then he rushed over to Frank, but it was too late for Frank, and he, he was killed that day. And Glenn was almost killed. His, uh, his whole body was burned, but especially his legs were burned so severely that uh, they said that he would probably never walk again. And the doctor came and looked at him uh, the, the next week, and the doctor said, well, I, I'm afraid I'm going to have to amputate. I'm going to have to cut off one of his legs. And he begged and pleaded, and the, his mother begged and pleaded and said, please, just give him a few more days, and if you have to take it off, then we will. But the infection began to clear up a little bit, and uh, the doctor said, well, I think he's going to be able to keep his legs, but he'll probably never walk again. And, of course, when, uh, when Glenn heard that, you can imagine as a seven-year-old boy to be told you would never walk again, he said, yes, I will walk, and not only will I walk, I'll run someday. And the doctor, just a little tear rolled down his uh, face as he thought, poor little boy, he, uh, he wants to walk, but he never will. Well, over the next few months and, and really the next year, uh, uh, I guess you'd call scar tissue developed on his legs, and it was very painful. But his mother and his father, too, even though his father worked in the field all day, his father would come home at night, and they would stretch his legs. They would push them, and he would just cry with pain, and they would say, do you want us to stop? And he said, no, no, don't stop. And so they kept exercising his legs, and one day the doctor came to see him, and Glenn said to the doctor, wait at the door, I have a surprise for you. And the, the doctor thought, well, maybe he's made some little something and he's going to give me a surprise. So he waited at the door and he said, okay, you can come in now. And when he opened the door to come in, Glenn was standing up. And the doctor started to run over to him to, to say, you're going to fall. And he said, oh, wait, wait, that's not all the surprise. And then Glenn drug one foot around in front of the other, and then he threw the other foot forward. He got his balance, drug his foot around, and he walked across the room to the doctor. And the doctor was just shocked. He couldn't believe it. He said, I never thought you would walk. 
And he said, not only will I walk, I'll also run. And run, he did. I'm telling you, everybody that saw him over the next uh, few years, they would see him running his little rabbit hop, they called it, and he would hoppity hop around town, but he was getting faster and faster and faster. And one day when he was 14 years old, he saw a sign in a, a store window that had some medals like the Olympic people wear when they win a race. And it <clears throat> said there was gonna be a race there in their town or in their county uh, in a few weeks and Glenn entered the race. And it was for a one mile run. And everybody was shocked that he entered, but they were even more shocked when he won. He won the race, and he outran all the other boys in that hippity-hop run that he did. Well, the story's too long to tell you all of it, but I will say that he went on to college, got a scholarship, a runner's scholarship to college, and <clears throat> he ran faster and faster and faster, and on one particular occasion while he was running for his college, he set a world record by running the mile in four minutes and four seconds. Now, of course, it's been run faster than that since then, but at that particular time, it was the fastest run in the world. And when people ask him, how is it that you, a little crippled boy, ended up becoming the world's fastest runner. And he said there are two reasons. Number one, he said, I read in my Bible that if I would not quit, that I would succeed. And he was referring to the verse in Galatians that said, do not grow weary in doing the right thing because in due season you will reap if you don't faint or if you don't give up but he said also because of my mother she worked with me so diligently and so faithfully and every day she would pray for me she would read the bible to me she told me about jesus and i became a christian when i was just a little crippled boy but he said i learned that if you never give up you can achieve what you want to. So when I heard that story as a nine-year-old boy, I said, I want to be like Glenn Cunningham. I want to never give up. I want to keep doing the right thing. <clears throat> now, I will say that I went through a period of time where I kind of lost focus on that, but after I became a Christian at age 17, the story of Glenn Cunningham continued to come back to me through very difficult times of my life. And even when I was in college and I became a runner and I would run the mile run, I would think about Glenn Cunningham. And I would say to you, I don't know what kind of challenges you have, I don't know how difficult your life might be, but no matter how much you face, I want you to know if you don't give up, you will succeed.